For those of you that don't know me, I'm Nick Chalabois. I'm part of the Microsoft Graph customer and partner experience team. And I focus on Microsoft Graph Data Connect. So essentially, when you think of the Microsoft Graph story, there are really three main pieces to um, the, the entire Graph story, right? There's the REST APIs, which we're all used to, that have been around for a couple of years now. There's the Graph Connectors, which essentially does data ingestion, uh, allows you to enrich what you have in the graph. And then there's this third piece at the bottom of the diagram here, that's Data Connect, that lets you extract information in bulk from the Microsoft Graph. When you think of Microsoft Graph Data Connect, we really focus on three key areas. The first one is being able to get data at scale. And so being able to extract millions and millions of rows of data uh, in a timely fashion. Today, if you were to try to extract information, let's say about emails for every user in the tenant uh, using the REST API, you're gonna be facing some throttling limits, right? So for you to be able to do that, you're probably looking at several hours, if not days, to be able to do that. When Microsoft Graph Data Connect will let you extract information about every user in the tenant or from specific groups that you specify, and everything will be done within ballpark figures, normally between 35 to 45 minutes, depending on the amount of data you export, but everything will be done in a timely fashion. The second focus area is the data privacy. So today, if you were to grant an app registration access to read information about emails, for example, if you're not granting the mail that read basic permissions, by default, that application will have access to read everything about the email, including the buddy, the buddy preview. So all the information that you might not necessarily need or want to grant the application access to. With Data Connect, what you end up doing is you essentially create a contract between the tenant and men and the application that's gonna be performing the extraction. So you specify, all right, I wanna get information about, let's say, events or emails for my users, but I don't wanna go and extract information about the buddy, the actual content of the email. So you can filter it out, and when the extraction happens, that property will never be extracted. So it won't ever make it to the, uh, the end result file. When you're extracting data using Microsoft Graph Data Connect, essentially what you're doing is you're creating a raw JSON file that's going to be hosted in an Azure storage account. Right? So if you're specifying that you don't want the buddy preview uh, and the buddy of the email, those properties will never make it into that raw exported file. And then the third uh, focus area is really data governance and security. Because the data is gonna be stored in an Azure storage account, you have access to all the audit logs to be able to figure out who's been reading that data, who's been interacting with the data you've exported. On top of this, the tenants, remember I was mentioning that contract that you need to establish, the tenant admin will also be able to review that contract and grant or revoke access to your uh, application to be able to extract that information or filter it down, right? So let's say, for example, you requested access for uh, the emails of the legal and the human resources team for in your tenant, the tenant admin will receive that contract, say, all right, so we're trying to extract the emails from everybody in those two groups. Oh, but I don't want them to have access to the legal team. So I can then use what we call the denial list and filter out the result and say, look, we're gonna grant you access to the human resources group, but not to the legal team. So data governance and security. So overall, how it works, there is a, uh, an Azure component to Microsoft Graph Data Connect. So essentially what you need to do is create an Azure data factory. And in there, you're gonna be defining a data pipeline. That data pipeline will extract a, um, a data source that is of type Microsoft 365. And you will specify what data set you wanna go and export. On the other end of the pipeline, you're going to have what we call a sync. So essentially, in this case, it's an Azure storage account. In the demo I'm going to be doing in just a few minutes, it's going to be an Azure Data Lake storage account. And then essentially, the pipeline will get authenticated by impersonating an Azure app registration that you defined, and the data will go and get extracted as a raw JSON file in that storage account. Today, we support multiple data sets. We, uh, most of them revolve around the Outlook entities. We have planned to introduce new data sets such as the SharePoint Online file uh, sharing, file usage. We are gonna be releasing the Teams chat that you see at the bottom of this slide here is gonna be released within the next few weeks. And those are the one-on-one -on -one chats and the one-to-many. We have information about calendar view, events, 
uh, messages, contacts, and so on. Right? So all the data sets you're seeing here are available for you to try today. We recently updated our documentation uh, with the bill conference being last week. So we just updated our uh, documentation and you can find sample data sets for every data set that we support as well. So if you just go to docs.microsoft.com, search for Microsoft Graph Data Connect, where you have the list of all the supported data sets, you also have links to sample data sets that contain about 10 rows of data, but it just gives you a good idea of what's actually contained within those data sets. So we mentioned previously that you, you have data privacy. Um, I kind of got ahead of myself there. I had a slide on it, but essentially when you create the pipeline, you define the terms of the contract. So you're extracting information for what users and what properties are you extracting the data for. Um, so let's do a quick demo of this. So essentially the first thing I did is I created a um, storage account. So a Azure Data Lake storage that has a container called data sets with the messages folder. This is where I'm gonna go and export the information from. So I'm gonna be extracting information about all the emails uh, in my tenant, and I'm gonna be storing the file in this uh, storage account. In order for you to be able to activate Microsoft Draft Data Connect, as a tenant admin, what you do is you navigate to your Office 365, or Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you go to the settings, org settings, and in there, you're going to be able to see Microsoft Graph Data Connect listed right here. Simply click on it. And then all you need to do is turn on Microsoft Graph Data Connect for your entire organization. You also need to specify a, um, a measure AD group of people that are going to be responsible for approving the request. So remember that contract that I mentioned? People in this team here are going to be the people uh, that are allowed to go and approve or revoke the data extraction. So in my case, the group is called MGDC Provers. Now let's go and create our data factory. So I'm going to go in here. I already have one created, but I want to create a new one just to show you how easy it is. I'm just going to go in, add a new one, name it um, Community Call 2, let's say. I'm not going to do Git integration in this case. I'm just going to go and create a brand new one. That normally takes about 10 seconds uh, to complete. And what this is going to give me is essentially Azure Data Factory, for those of you that never played with it, is going to give me a new workbench where I can go in and define in a visual fashion what my ETLs or extract, transform, and load operations are going to be on any data set. Okay. So this is what the Azure Data Factory workbench looks like. I'm going to go in and edit my pipeline, or actually I'm going to go and create a new pipeline here. And then I have a set of different activities that I can perform on the data. In my case, Microsoft Draft Data Connect is actually a source for the copy data, right? Because so remember, we're going to be extracting that data and storing it as a raw JSON file. So I'm going to drag and drop that copy data activity. I can give it whatever name I want. So copy M365 data, for example. And then I'm going to need to go and specify a source. So what data am I extracting? And a sync, which is essentially where I'm going to be storing the data at the other end. So let's start with the source. I'm going to go in and define a new data set. And in here, I'm going to be searching for the Office 365 data set. Click continue on this. I'm going to go and edit the properties of it. What I need to do is create what we call a link service. So essentially, authenticating against my, my tenant. In my case, what I've done is I created an app registration in my tenant that doesn't have any permissions whatsoever. So I didn't grant it any API permissions. We're only going to be using that app registration to authenticate back to our sync. So my storage account actually has granted a blob contributor role to that service principle. I'm going to click, I'm going to test the connection first, make sure everything works. I'm going to go and create that. So we're good. Now I have a list of all the data sets available. In my case, I'm going to go and pick the messages data set. Right? So that is going to give me access to all the emails in my tenant. I'm going to go back to my pipeline. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import the schema. So what it's going to do is it's going to analyze what that data set contains as far as data fields, and it's going to load them all in here. And you can see if you scroll down that I do have access right now to the buddy and buddy preview. So my organization has privacy concern with these two. I'm going to select them out and just remove them from the uh, exported schema. 
I'm going to specify a filter as well. So I'm going to say I only want to extract information from emails that were sent in, let's say, the past quarter. So from March 1st to June 1st. And then what I'm going to do is by default, it's going to go and extract information about all users in the Office 365 tenant. I want to change that and I want to specify specific groups. So in my case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the legal department, the legal team, and the finance. Here you go. If I can only type properly and finance. So it's only going to go and extract information from these two groups. So it looks like my source is good. Next thing I need to do is specify where I'm going to be storing that exported file. So I'm going to go and create a new data set uh, for the sync. In my case, I'm going to be picking the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. It's like this. The only available format is binary. So it's essentially going to be a binary file, but that contains raw JSON in it. Same as the source data set, I need to go and create a new link service. Remember that I need to authenticate with a service principal. I'm going to pick my storage account, which is community call. And then I'm just going to go and copy the information about my service principal. So the app ID and an app secret that I um, that I created for my app registration. Just going to test that, make sure it works. We're all good. I create the link service. Now I'm going to go in and go in my data set container that I showed you previously. And I'm going to select that messages folder. All right, so we're all set. My sync is created, my, uh, my source is created. What I can do now is publish that pipeline. I'm going to click publish on this. And then I'm going to go and manually trigger it. What you can do is you can actually have scheduled triggers, right? So let's say you want to do an export every quarter or every week. You can have a scheduled trigger. You can have what we call tumbling windows, so every three hours. In my case, I'm just going to do a manual trigger. And that's going to go and officially send that contract, right? So that contract here where I'm saying I want to extract from these two groups, these fields to the tenant admin. Now, as the tenant admin, Remember to activate Microsoft Graph Data Connect, I go to settings or settings. And then from the Microsoft Graph Data Connect blade, I'm going to have access to what we call the PAM portal, so the Privilege Access Management Portal. If I click on this, this is going to bring me to a list of all requests that are either uh, that have been approved, that have been revoked, or that are pending. And we can see right here, I do have a request pending for my pipeline. I'm going to go and take a look at this. By the way, this interface here is going to be we're, we're working on uh, improving the visual for this uh, right now you can see that the request has been uh, made for the finance and legal team for all these columns here right so again we're going to change that to be in a tabular format so that's a little more user friendly but you can review make sure that the buddy is not there and then let's say in my case i would, i want to approve for the finance team but legal team this is a no-no so i'm just going to go in and pick legal from here so I can filter the request and say approve, and boom. So essentially, the pipeline will start its execution. The data will be stored in my Azure storage account, and then I'm going to end up with a file that looks like this here that is raw JSON that represents the content of the emails I've extracted. Right? And with this, really, really easily, once you have access to that data, you can start creating some very interesting insights using something like Power BI, for example. So for example, in my case, what I've done, and this is a true example, is my test tenant. I've actually mapped um, my, my exported uh, JSON file to Power BI dashboard. And in here, for example, I'm getting insights as to, all right, how are people using attachments in my, uh, my environment? You can see that you have a link. So reference attachment is essentially when you're linking to a file in your OneDrive instead of sending a, the actual attachment where people are creating those underscore V2, underscore V3, and so on. I want people to start using reference attachment, but you can see that only 0.04% of my organization is using it. So there's probably room for improvement, right? I could probably do a training program or something. Um, email statuses, right? So how how many emails are on red, uh, but based on different teams, right? So you can try to understand, right? How are teams, what teams are overloaded, right? Let's say your human resources team on average, they have 300 unread emails per person. Well, maybe there's something wrong there, right? You should probably try to figure out what's going on. Why are they overloaded like this? Uh, being able to understand trends. When are people using emails throughout the day? And then you can go and do those very interesting um, deep insights and figure out, all right, how are people collaborating inside of my organization? 
right? What are the collaboration diagram? How are people talking with one another across the different teams? And that will easily surface very interesting uh, insights. So for example, this is my retail team. They're not talking to my HR team at all. Like, why is that, right? Um, seems like my HR team is only talking to find this team through these two folks. Like, why, where is the connection there? And this, all the dashboard I showed you there was built within about five minutes just by exposing that raw JSON data that you've exported. And so this is just uh, to give you an idea of what's possible. Now, Brian's gonna be talking about our technical assessment program later on. We do have a specific program for Data uh, uh, Connect, which is essentially gonna be giving access to data sets that we're planning on releasing, gathering feedback about what fields where people are looking for and helping us prioritize what data sets should be released next. So definitely, if you're interested in that, um, we invite you to join the TAP program. So on that note, Brian, if you wanna take over. Excellent. Thank you so much, Nick, for sharing about uh, Microsoft Graph Data Connect. I know uh, not everyone's always familiar with it, so it's good to see kind of in real terms how it functions, wh where you can be able to use it, uh, and even some of the Power BI reporting, some great stuff to show into there.